And so the fourth most common interaction would be a pick one type interaction. And the storyline's pick one really is just a multiple choice question. But instead of having to use only text as your answer choices, uh, you can use objects, pictures, characters, shapes, buttons, pretty much anything. So let's take a look at a couple examples here. So in this one, we're uh, looking at some custom uh, buttons that we created, right? And so notice how only one of these options can be selected. And we click Submit, and then we get our feedback. Cool. And in this example, uh, it's more of a scenario where each of these buttons has been uh, created from scratch. So these are not your traditional radio buttons or, or check boxes. Click one of these, and then we click Submit. And then we also get our feedback here for this one. And then finally, here's another example. This one is just a couple images that are being used in the pick one, or in this case, it's a this or that. You, know, you make a selection, and obviously it's only, only one or two choices can be correct. But again, we don't have to use the built-in scoring or grading. We can just have these uh, be single slide practice activities where we just continue to the next slide, or we can use the feedback and scoring that's part of the pick one convert to free form. So let's take a look at how to put these together in Storyline 360. All right, so let's start off with a just a simple graphic right here. It's a circle with a, it's a white fill, and then it has this light blue on the outline. And if I drill into the states right here, you can see that I have a custom selected state for it. If I double click to drill down, I've got just a check box, check mark here, and then the a slightly different darker outline color. So that's what we'll start with for each of these. So I'm just gonna uh, see it's called button one right here. So I'm just gonna hold down the control key I'm down here, make a copy of it, and we'll call this one button two. Whoops, not that button two, button O2. And select both of those, and then we'll do a control click drag to make two more. And let's see, this one will be button four. And then that'll be button three. All right, so the idea is that each of these is going to be a choice, and I have some text boxes off to the side so we can just kind of line these up for each of them. Uh, it's not totally perfect, not totally aligned, but that's going to be enough. All right. And so at this point, it's again, it's just a, we're just designing this on the slide here. Nothing fancy. It's still our own design. We're not being limited or driven here by a, a specific uh, form or template. And then what I want to do now is just convert this to a free form and we'll use the pick one. So again, design it any way you want. I have custom graphics if I wanted. Once you have it sort of line, uh, aligned and, 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 and set up the way you like, up to the insert tab, convert to freeform, and this time we'll choose pick one and just click OK. And so just like with other convert to freeforms, you're immediately taken here into form view. You'll see that over here, right, it switched to form view. By default, we're usually working over in slide view where you have the open slide, the blank slide, where you can pretty much uh, do whatever you want on that slide. Once we convert it, then we're taken to form view where we can wire up the correct and incorrect choices and then we'll still be able to return and uh, have a free form view approach for designing our slide. All right, so over here in form view, I want to come up and then just choose my choices. So my choices would be button one. And notice as I highlight, as I hover over each of these, you notice over here on the right side, right, each of these is highlighted to indicate, hey, that's the one you're currently looking to select. So even if you don't name your files correctly or your objects, at least you have a little bit of, a, of a, an, an aid over here to help identify what you're working with. But still, I'd always prefer to name these correctly just because it makes it easier to find them here from uh, the dropdown. And we'll just make button one uh, correct right here. So button one oval, and I'll jump over here to slide view. All right, so I'm gonna show you one thing that happened here. We'll, we'll, we'll fix this, but right now I'm gonna show you how this works and how you can kind of uh, clean this up real quick. So I'm gonna select the first graphic right here, and then notice down in the selected state, uh, our selected state is there, but there's actually this glow. Don't worry about the way this is rendering, but uh, there's a yellow glow on the outside of my shape. And so whenever you convert to freeform, Storyline's going to automatically add that. Uh, if I just change it real quick to selected, there's that glow right there, right? So it adds a glow, and the idea is to redoing that because if you didn't have a selected state, then you need to kind of have something that says or identifies how that's going to be um, you know, visually different than the normal state. Okay, but we already created our selected state, but it's just, we still add that anyway. And you'll also notice on the other ones that since we didn't, we only, we only chose this first one as correct, they just have the glow and not the checkbox. So it doesn't really matter what your workflow is. If you've already added a custom state, uh, go to the item that you, you added as the correct choice. 
I'm going to double click this and I'm just going to remove the glow from that, that selection. So I'm going to format, shape effect, glow, and I'm going to choose no glow. And that's removed and click done. And then to fix the rest of these real quick, I'm going to use the format painter. So up to the home tab, double click format. Whoops. I don't want that one. I want this one. So select this one, home tab, format painter. And now I can quickly paint these the way I like. So uh, it's just something you have to do as a workaround. We'll get that resolved, but uh, that's kind of the workflow for working with custom objects in the States. At this point, you'll also notice down here in the slide layers, we've added two new layers for us, indicating the correct and incorrect layers. So we have a quiz, we have a pick one. Doesn't matter what we do with this, but this is now going to work. So we'll pre preview. Oh, I have this one selected as default selected. Turn that off. Now let's preview one more time. Make our choice. And you see how it has that toggle effect, right? So that's the benefit of the, that's how the pick one works. Where only one choice, just like a multiple choice, can be select, selected, click submit, and there's my correct feedback. Now, if we have these buttons detached from the actual text, then we definitely don't want to use any sort of sorting. And if I go to form view and I come over here to shuffle, there's no shuffling. So if you want to shuffle them, then you're going to want to connect each choice with the object. And so the way I would do this then is to group each of these, right? So if I select the two, let's go into the timeline, move that out a little bit. So I'm going to select both of those, control G, and that's called group two. So let's say at choice one and the same thing, right? Now I haven't aligned these, so I know this doesn't look right. Choice two, control G to group, and then choice three, and then finally choice four. So I know my alignment's off. I know that, uh, choice four. Now I need to come back in here to form view and you see how it did automatically select each of those uh, groups for me, kind of assumed, kind of rolled everything up in there. And now the benefit is, is that these will travel together. And if I wanted to, you know, move these in, I could reposition, but the objects are together. I can still change my text. And now I have at least the uh, objects connected. And if I wanted to shuffle them, shuffle answers and preview the file, now that they can all move around and I'll still be able to work like that. Right, there's my choice one, my choice four, and so on. So a couple options there for working with the pick one. I like keeping these grouped, right? Rather than putting the text inside of the shape, which is certainly a valid way to do it, right? I could, I could have taken this text box and then added it inside of one of these states. Uh, the downside is, is that it's a little tougher to edit because I'd have to drill down into the object states each time I want to make the change versus right here, I've got the live text on the slide. Downside is, is that if I ungroup it, then I've got to re-add this as a choice, but that's really not such a big deal. So uh, the pick one, one of the most flexible interactions you have uh, for creating uh, creative multiple choice questions where, uh, you know, you want to use something beyond the typical text choice answer, whether that's a pictures, a characters, shapes, buttons, or anything.